my name is Sean Roberts and I was the curator of the Voices of War exhibition uh, which was held here in the Library of Birmingham between September and December 2014. Well, the exhibition was obviously planned as part of the city's uh, marking of the centenary of the outbreak of the First World War in 1914. And as the library has huge riches in terms of its archive and photography collections, uh, we knew that we had a lot of material that the people of Birmingham would be very interested in seeing and which would speak to them about the centenary of that war a hundred years ago. Well, what I very much wanted to do was focus on the people of Birmingham and their experiences of living through that period of total war in the city. Uh, and that's people who were both here at home, on the home front, whether they were women employed in munitions or children in the city school during the conflict, or indeed um, that proportion of the city's population that actually objected to the war. And then also, of course, you've also got the immense experiences of, of the Birmingham men uh, who went away to fight at the front uh, and those women who went to support them as nurses or, or, or in other roles. We get the worst cases here, as it is the first place where the wounded stop to get their wounds dressed and only those are taken out who cannot travel farther. We had some very bad cases in yesterday. One man with his face burnt away with liquid fire there is very little left and most of his jaw and mouth being gone, one pushes a tube down his throat for food. As people walked around the exhibition, as well as seeing items from um, you know, the very rich and extensive archive and photographic collections on the walls, you also hear a range of voices. Voices from men and women, from children, uh, from all sorts of different backgrounds. Uh, and those voices were actually reading out extracts from letters and diaries and other archive documents that were actually written at the time. Um, and so we very much wanted to incorporate the voices of people who were living here in Birmingham in 1914, telling their own story, if you like, of, of what happened to them. Birmingham and its environs form a vast mass of smithies and workshops in which tens of thousands of men and women, boys and girls, are toiling night and day to manufacture military implements. We have been shown tanks in course of construction, not one at a time, but by whole battalions. Birmingham women may indeed be proud of their city, which has somewhere about 40,000 men, either at the front or preparing to go there, and a far larger army of men and women, almost as indispensable, here at home, turning out the necessary equipment for the troops. Obviously the exhibition was held in our, uh, our exhibition gallery here at the Library of Birmingham and the whole idea behind that space uh, was that we would have, you know, a purpose-built, high-quality space where we could actually do justice to the fantastic collections that we have here in the library. A lot of the stories we were telling were very personal and very intimate stories and so you need to provide a space where people can actually interact in that way with the items that are on show or with the voices that they hear as they're walking around. The soldiers departing for the seat of war require a good send-off and it is chiefly the children's duty to wish them luck and give them encouragement. At the Vicarage Road School, Girls like myself are taking home wool to knit socks to send to our soldiers. The greatest war in history is being fought closer to us than a good many imagine. Really, the scene of battle is only a few hours distant. All parts of our empire have sent men to keep the motherland in the war, and many have made the greatest sacrifice by giving their lives. One of the first things I think little children should do is to make up their minds that they will not purchase anything made by Germans or Austrians, for by doing so, they are helping the enemy. It's a long way to Tipperary, it's a long way to go. It's a long way to Tipperary, to 
The feedback uh, from people who've been to see the exhibition on the whole has been very positive. Uh, people have found it very moving, I think. And I think part of the reason for that um, is because a lot of the stories that are featured in it, they touch on themes that are universal, if you like, that are about the experience of war generally, whether that's families living with the experience of separation or loss, or, you know, the men coming back from the front after peace was declared and having to readjust to civilian life, having to live with either physical or psychological disabilities. And a lot of those sort of themes, if you like, are still with us today. So I think people find that um, very touching and, and, and very relevant to, you know, to, to people's experiences now as well.